thousands of nautical miles of water isolate a single coordinate in the vast South Pacific Ocean. A windswept island rises from the depths here. It remains strictly uninhabited, but this is just the beginning. The isolation is absolute. Why does this territory reject all presence? The terrain looks stable from a distance. However, the constant wind shear renders it a place never meant for any habitation. One can notice how the vegetation bends flat against the rocky surface. At first glance, it seems like a calm haven, but in reality, the environment is hostile. Mist slowly settles over the cliffs. The landscape waits for the next cycle. 400 Merino and Merino cross sheep were brought ashore in 1896 to a land unsuited for domesticated livestock. Why were these animals left without support in the middle of the ocean? It would seem like a sentence to extinction for creatures used to human care. But in reality, this abandonment turned into a radical survival test on Campbell Island. There were no shelters constructed, no supplemental feed provided, and absolutely no shearing performed. The animals were simply left to their fate in total isolation. At first glance, the terrain seems merely rugged, but in reality, it presents a lethal challenge. One can notice how the relentless winds and cold rain batter the landscape without pause. The sheep had to subsist on scarce natural forage found among the bare rocks. 75 years passed before humans finally returned to the island. They witnessed something that defied initial expectations of collapse. The flock was still alive, but the animals had changed profoundly in appearance and behavior. Their survival strategies shifted so dramatically that they barely resembled the original stock released decades earlier. But this is just the beginning of the transformation. Campbell Island lies deep in the South Pacific Ocean, hundreds of kilometers from the New Zealand mainland. An Australian ship's captain officially recorded the island in 1810 during a sealing voyage. He named the landmass after the Campbell brothers, who were the owners of his vessel. Afterward, the location served mainly as a temporary stopover for offshore hunting activities. One can observe how nature operates here strictly by its own unyielding rules. The environment is hostile, characterized by constant storms and low temperatures. Humans never established a permanent foothold here due to these conditions. Thus, the history of the island merged with the unique adaptation of the flock. 1896 marked the moment Campbell Island joined New Zealand's pastoral lease system. While the wool industry boomed, James Gordon from Gisborne identified a calculated opportunity here. He signed a lease and organized the transport of building materials across the sea. 400 sheep accompanied this cargo, but this is just the beginning. Why choose such an isolated location? The initial plan seemed straightforward. The vast surface area and lack of competition promised high yields for wool production. However, the reality on the island did not unfold as the business plan expected. At first glance, the venture looked simple, but in reality, financial difficulties forced Gordon to surrender the lease after only a few years. The project seemed destined to end until management passed to Captain Tucker. Rather than withdrawing, he chose to expand. One can notice the immediate shift in strategy. It gets more complex further on. Tucker arranged multiple shipments, each carrying approximately 1,000 animals. Most were Merino and Merino cross sheep, breeds specifically developed for wool production. One can observe how the introduced flocks began to dominate the landscape. From a land with almost no permanent human presence, the territory transformed into an isolated pastoral outpost in the middle of the ocean. Between 7,000 and 8,000 animals. That was the staggering peak density the flock reached on Campbell Island by 1913. In those early years, farming relied heavily on a constant human presence to manage the livestock. However, the biological load soon began to exceed what the local environment could physically support. But this is just the beginning of the crisis. Why did the population plummet so drastically after hitting such heights? The expansion appeared sustainable for nearly two decades, but the island's finite ecosystem could not withstand the pressure as the animals overgrazed the native vegetation faster than it could regenerate. One can notice how the food resources dwindled, making survival increasingly harsh for the sheep themselves. By 1931, the herd had shrunk to 4,000 and operations ceased. The remaining workers found themselves trapped. At first glance, their stay seemed manageable, but in reality, they were completely cut off from the mainland with no ships or communication for nearly two years. It gets more complex further on. They endured severe shortages until the final evacuation. When the rescue vessel arrived, the accumulated wool proved economically useless, 
Failing to cover even the cost of transportation, humans departed, leaving the flock to the wild. It is visible how the animals were left without shelters or supplementary feed. Sheep bred for care were forced to confront the elements alone. Relentless winds and resource scarcity became their new reality. The flock entered a new era of unassisted survival. Zero chance of survival. That was the verdict most experts pronounced when the domesticated livestock was abandoned on Campbell Island. Why did a breed requiring constant care not perish on this isolated piece of land with cold winds and bare rock? It seemed inevitable that the animals would die out without human intervention. But contrary to expectations, the island's harsh environment inadvertently created specific conditions that allowed part of the flock to adapt. One can notice how the situation unfolded against all standard predictions. Powerful winds blow almost constantly, battering the steep cliffs that surround the rough terrain. These severe conditions make it physically difficult for parasitic insects, especially flies, to thrive in such an open space. For the sheep, this became a crucial advantage as infections carried by insects are among the most frequent causes of death in farming. But this is just the beginning. At first glance, the bleak environment looks like a death sentence, but in reality, it acted as a sterilizing shield against disease. One can observe that Campbell Island is home to virtually no terrestrial predators capable of threatening livestock. As a result, the animals did not face the stress of constant pursuit or life-threatening injuries during the adaptation period. This circumstance spared them one of the greatest dangers faced by inherently vulnerable creatures. The flock moves calmly across the open terrain without fear of attack. It gets more complex further on. Since the sheep numbers dropped sharply in the early 1930s, the local ecosystem received a respite. Native plant species, including large distinctive plants known as megaherbs, gradually regenerated their populations. The improvement of natural food sources provided the survivors with enough nutrition to sustain themselves and reproduce. Thus, a unique combination of factors allowed the sheep to continue existing under truly wild conditions. Zero guarantees remained for the sheep once they were abandoned on Campbell Island. The population quickly underwent a period of harsh natural selection. Mortality rates during this early phase were extremely high, but this was only the beginning. Why did the flock struggle despite favorable conditions? The island offered resources, but the demands were physical. Individuals unable to withstand the cold climate move effectively across the rugged terrain or make use of natural food sources died before they had a chance to reproduce. At first glance, the landscape seems simple, but in reality, it acts as a filter. One can notice that only the stronger sheep, those more cold tolerant and better adapted to life in the wild, managed to survive each passing winter. From this small group of survivors, the flock gradually stabilized and began to recover. 44 years passed between the human departure in 1931 and the final scientific return. By 1975, researchers arrived to collect the last remaining sheep, expecting to find standard domestic animals. They were confronted with a scene entirely beyond expectation. What stood before them was a population that had clearly diverged after generations of isolation. Why did the surviving individuals begin to display traits increasingly suited to life in the wild? The transformation did not occur over a few short years. It unfolded across several decades because natural selection relentlessly favored survival adaptations. One can notice how adult sheep exhibited longer legs and a taller stance. They demonstrated greater agility when moving across the rugged terrain compared to mainland stock. At first glance, the difference seemed minor, but in reality, the physical structure of the flock had shifted. But this is just the beginning. In contrast to their ancestors, the wool was no longer uniform and soft. Many fibers had become coarse and weather damaged by wind and rain. In some individuals, the fleece began to shed naturally in cycles rather than accumulating excessively. Ewes were able to give birth while standing and lambs could stand and move within minutes of being born. Further analysis indicated that the flock had developed resistance to at least two diseases. They maintained extended daily activity from early morning until late evening to maximize foraging time. Consequently, the sheep did not become a new species. However, they had changed profoundly enough to be regarded as a unique evolutionary population. This offers a clear reflection of the power of isolation. 
1937 marked a decisive turning point in the legal status of the island management. The physical changes observed in the sheep astonished scientists, but forced humans to confront a difficult question. Should these animals be allowed to continue existing on the remote territory at all? What had once begun as a failed farming experiment had now evolved into a serious ecological problem. In the eyes of environmental managers, the sheep remained an invasive species despite their adaptation and transformation. But instead of being valued for this evolution, the animals continued to place pressure on native vegetation, trampling the recovering soil. They slowed the island's natural recovery significantly. It gets more complex further on, because conservation priorities gradually took precedence from the late 1930s onward. By 1954, the territory was officially declared a nature reserve for flora and fauna. Subsequent legal decisions called for the complete removal of the sheep to restore the original ecosystem. One can notice how the initial measures seemed effective when a scientific survey in 1958 estimated the population had fallen to fewer than 1,000 individuals. At first glance, the problem appeared solvable, but in reality, nature had other plans. In the absence of natural predators, and as the vegetation began to recover, the remaining sheep continued to reproduce. And this is not the limit. Therefore, faced with the risk of long-term ecological damage, authorities were compelled to implement stronger measures. Operations began with the construction of fences to compartmentalize the landscape. Organized culling campaigns systematically targeted the flocks grazing on the slopes. Approximately 3,000 sheep were removed over several successive operations to clear the protected zone. The island moved steadily toward a restored ecological balance. 1975 marked the launch of a rescue effort to bring a small number of the remaining sheep back to New Zealand. Although the original population on Campbell Island was removed in the name of conservation, humans did not completely close the chapter on this group. The aim was to preserve the genetic lineage that had formed after decades of total isolation. But this is just the beginning. Why was the operation far from easy? The sheep had become fully feral and actively avoided human contact. To gather a few dozen individuals, the team utilized sound signals to guide them after repeated attempts. One can notice how the animals eventually responded to the noise. At first glance, the captured group seemed sufficient, but in reality, only a very small group, around 10 of the strongest animals, was retained for breeding. Thanks to this decision, the lineage originating from Campbell Island did not disappear entirely. Instead, it continued to exist in captivity as a distinct conservation population. Transition to the next level reveals a darker turn, even after leaving the harsh island where they had evolved the fate of this lineage remained fragile. In 2017, five of these rare sheep were stolen and slaughtered. This act reduced the total number to only about 30 individuals. It is visible how the population shrank instantly. More tragically, several of the stolen animals were pregnant and only weeks away from giving birth. Despite this setback, the surviving sheep have continued to reproduce one can observe the flock preserving the final remnants of a lineage that once evolved independently in the middle of the ocean. The genetic line survives. One to two billion dollars is the estimated economic loss the United States suffers annually due to the biological transformation of a single species. This massive financial impact occurs in states such as Texas, Florida, and California, where feral pigs have established a dominant presence. These creatures were once ordinary farm animals, brought to North America by humans for agriculture. However, many were released or abandoned over time, gradually slipping beyond the boundaries of human control. Why do these domestic animals undergo such drastic physical changes once they are free? It seems that genetics should keep them similar to their barnyard ancestors. But without the protection of pens and guaranteed food, nature forces them to rewrite their own biology to survive the harsh wilderness. One can notice how the animal's physique shifts radically within just a few generations. Their bodies become significantly more muscular to navigate rough terrain, while long tusks develop for defense and foraging. A thick, coarse coat grows to protect them from the elements, replacing the thin skin of domestic stock. It gets more complex further on. Their behavior turns increasingly aggressive, shedding the docility bred into them over centuries.
Unlike the sheep of Campbell Island, which evolved quietly in remote isolation in the South Pacific, these pigs did not change in a vacuum. They multiplied rapidly across open farmland, dense forests, and suburban edges. At first glance, they might appear to be stray livestock, but in reality, they are a serious invasive species causing widespread agricultural damage. One can observe the destruction in fields where crops are uprooted and soil is overturned. And this is not the limit. They disrupt entire ecological systems, leaving visible consequences that affect native wildlife. The story of the Campbell Island sheep was merely an early warning of this broader, unstoppable pattern. When humans withdraw, nature does not pause but continues to select, adapt, and transform life until the consequences become undeniable. Fifty years of isolation turned Campbell Island into a testing ground for natural laws. Why did a failed farming venture become a biological anomaly? The environment exerts constant pressure on the population. Consequently, nature eliminates traits that do not aid survival in the wild. It gets more complex further on. At first glance, the change seems chaotic, but in reality, the reshaping follows strict evolutionary logic. One can notice how the boundary between domestication and wilderness blurs in the physical traits of the animals. Generations adapt to the terrain, discarding the genetic legacy of agriculture. Thus, the island completes its transformation into a self-regulating wild system.